Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Glossy Philosophy. My name is Jansen Vidman. Make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. Give this video a thumbs up because today we are doing a book talk on Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. This is a cult classic. It's also a book that you probably read in either middle school or high school or sometime in college. And it is one of those books that you have to absolutely reread and reread and reread again and again as you get older and understand more of the world or understand less of the world as the case may be. So Ray Bradbury himself is a really interesting person because he never goes past a high school diploma, but he has this insatiable desire to consume as much as he can from public libraries. He is a voracious reader and he is really freaked out by a book he reads concerning Stalin and how Stalin kind of wiped the memory of a whole generation of people and really got them thinking all the same or that's how the book portrayed it. So that is a very big basis of Fahrenheit 451. There's a story that goes that Ray Bradbury, after he was writing Fahrenheit 451, had no title for this book, called up the fireman or a fire person and asked at what temperature does paper burn? The firefighter says Fahrenheit 451 and there is the title. So now that we know a little bit about the author, let's go into a quick synopsis because it's not a very long book. Actually, a lot of this is an introduction and kind of an explanation of what the story is about and all of this inspiration. So the story itself is really a fast read and it is something that I would encourage you to read very quickly because even though it is a story that will make you think it is something that you probably want to get in your body quickly so that you can think about it, but you take it as you need to. So the basic synopsis is, is that Guy Montauk is a firefighter and firefighters are very different from how you and I experience firefighters. Instead of putting out fires, they actually start fires and there is a very like police society where people are calling in on their neighbors, on their friends, on their loved ones, if they happen to see a book. And books are very much against the law. No one speaks of them, no one has them. And if you do, the firemen will come to your house and set fire either to your house, to all your books, and possibly even yourself. There is a moment at the very beginning of this book where Guy Montag sets fire to a person's house and the woman whose house it is, she decides to also burn with her books and he starts to think, maybe there's something to these books. Why would someone be willing to die just for pieces of paper? It doesn't make any sense. We later find out that he has actually been secretly stealing books and hiding them. He ends up reading some of them. He doesn't fully understand the information. He gets hooked up with a professor that kind of helps him get through the brain fog that he has. Guy Montag is also married at this point and it is not a great marriage. She is a mess. Her friends are a mess. He finds a little bit of solace in the new neighbor daughter. Unfortunately, she does not make it very long into the story. So eventually, Guy Montag decides that he is going to change his life around and he's going to see what's going on with the books and the rest of the story unfolds from there. So if you haven't read this book or you haven't read it in a long time, I would stop watching right now and I would go read it and then come back and watch this book talk because we are about to spoiler it up. So just, you know, take a pause right now if you need to. For the rest of us who have read it or have reread it recently, there are so many good, interesting ideas that are still very relevant to today. And I personally love this book and I also hate this book. So let's talk about why I love it and why I think it's really relevant to today and just this idea of metamorphosis and change and all those good things. So why I think it's relevant to today is that there are so many moments in this book where screens have taken over everyone's lives. And it is not just watching TV. It is also feeling like you are a part 
of being in that story because the marketing has become so advanced and so good and yet it's also very close to where marketing is today which I find very frightening and very scary. Guy's wife is completely entranced by being in a room of giant screens so that she can continue to be a part of any story or movie that she's watching. Now the movies that she's watching are very different from movies that you and I watch. They are very short and condensed versions of stories and it's just a bunch of pictures and some of them are very, very violent and some of them don't even make any sense. At one point, Guy asks his wife, what was the story about? Like, why do you love watching this so much? What am I missing? And she tries to describe it and she can't because her brain is like so fuzzy and so overloaded with all of these images and all of this advertising that she doesn't even know why she likes it and she can't even understand what the story is. Guy at one point watches a movie with her and some of her friends and is completely freaked out by the violence that's happening and how lightly all of the women take it. Now this is not that different from what real life is today, right? A lot of the movies that we can stream, that we can watch, are very violent, are very just out there with everything, and I think that Fahrenheit 451, if nothing else, is a good reminder to step away from the screens every once in a while and read a book, and just the importance of books and having that physical touch and also being able to communicate books and ideas in a very clear way and just have a wonderful conversation with someone or, you know, even online is helpful if you can't speak to someone for whatever reason. But the thing that I really took away from this reading, I think I've read this book two or three times, at various points of my life and each time I'm coming away with something very different. The first time it was completely freaked out by the book and loved it. The second time I grabbed a little bit more of that detail and the third time is when I started to actually think, wait a minute, I have some problems with this book, which we'll go into in just a minute. But I do really love the love of of literature and books and ideas that Ray Bradbury is trying to get across to his audience and say, don't just watch TV, don't just watch screens, make sure that you are making time to expand your mind and to be curious about the world. The Neighbor Clarice is a great example of just continuously being curious about the world and going against authority. I do have a lot of problems with the character of Clarice, but I love just her youthfulness and her, her youthful curiosity, which of course Guy Montag kind of grabs onto and wants to inhabit that world as well. So at the end of the book, I think it's really interesting that when he kind of, you know, gets away from the hound and he gets involved with some of these other men who have also been forced to run away from the world, not only does the world that he knows get completely decimated by an atomic bomb, but also the guys that he's with are like, very chill and very not pushy with their ideas. I think that's a really interesting twist because we're coming from such from such a pushy world where one idea is the only idea and it has to be this way otherwise basically you die or you go to jail. And to have this new idea of I'm here to help and I have a lot of information that maybe you need and maybe you don't, but I'm here for you no matter what, is a really interesting contrast. So now that we've talked about a few things that I really loved about the book, let's talk about a few things that I have problems with. Number one, let's just get it out, Clarice, she is young. She is much younger than Guy Montag. She is obviously supposed to be the youthful curious, innocent person who, you know, kind of kickstarts this metamorphosis for Guy Montag. 
I don't have an issue with that. My issue with Clarice is that Guy Montag starts to think about her in what feels an inappropriate way and starts to almost wish that he was spending more time with her rather than helping to fix his wife. So I do take issue with that, especially because she does seem like she's still in high school and he is not. The other issue, the other big, big issue that I have with the book is of course the intense hatred of women that comes across. I did not get that the first two times I read this book, but this last time I definitely did. Guy Montag just really goes after all the women and just thinks they're so stupid and they have no brains and they could not possibly even grasp anything that he is trying to explain to them even though he himself a few days ago was in the exact same boat. He's not even giving them a chance. He's basically bashing them over the head with all of this information that has come to light for him and not giving them any time to digest. And I think that not only is that cruel, but it's also just like what a guy thing, right? Like females aren't smart. Females can't possibly understand anything. All we want to do is watch TV. And I, yes, I completely understand that this book was written a while ago, but I do still feel like some of those vibes happen today. And that is very, very irritating. I don't love really any of the females that are in this book. I also don't love that there are no female saviors in the book. There's really only one woman and the woman who decides to have herself be burned with her books who is kind of interesting and feels like she's more than just a shallow two-dimensional person. Everybody else feels very stuck and immovable. And at the end, again, when Guy Montag meets the other men who have had to run away, where are the women? Why is it only guys? Seriously, women are not that easily brainwashed and we do have brains for ourselves. So that is a little upsetting. Something that you have to kind of get over when you're reading this. It is a very male heavy cast of men who understand things and are able to understand things, whereas the women don't seem to be able to understand anything. The last thing I want to talk about is really more of a question. I think it's really interesting that at one point when Guy is starting to read and he's having his wife read too, they look at each other and they think, why are we even together? How did we get together? Like, how did I meet you? And they can't remember. And I just feel like Ray Bradbury lost an opportunity to kind of explain what happened before. Even though the fire chief goes into the book thing and why books are burned and why books are so dangerous, they never really go into like the universal brain fog and why everybody just wants to be surrounded by screens all the time, like literally surrounded by screens instead of actually participating in life. So I'm just very curious, how is it possible that it seems like they met during a time when the brain fog wasn't happening and then society very quickly like went into the decline mentally and yet other people seem to be very clear like the fire chief seems to know exactly what's going on it also seems like he reads quite a bit the other th question that i have is when guy montag kills his chief the fire chief and he thinks about it later he says i'm pretty sure that, that my fire chief wanted me to do that that he was just tired of fighting and he was tired of not being able to live his true self and he was thankful that i did that do you agree with that i don't know the first few times i read it i was on guy's side this time i read it and i thought Maybe that's just an excuse. I've personally never done anything like that, so I don't know what happens in your brain after that happens. But I would assume that you would probably want to make yourself the good guy after creating such chaos and such hurt. And I'm just curious if any of you have read the book and what you think about that particular scene and also the hound if you'd like to weigh in in the comments down below. So that is the book talk for Fahrenheit 451. Thank you guys so much for watching this book talk. I think 
it is very important that we continue to discuss books. I think it's very important that we continue to read books and especially if I have any women out there just know that I don't agree with how the women are treated or written about in this book and we all know that we are better than the women that are in this book particular, but the story itself I think is really brilliant and something that we need to continue to keep in our minds as we go forward and are continually surrounded by screens, especially with all AI and all that good stuff. So I do fashion videos every Wednesday, beauty videos every Friday, and I will see you very soon. Bye!